So let's go to the questions. Now, if you've got questions about anything EMS related, uh, today's just kind of a general topic because um, I just want to get in the swing of things. I want to jump in. So I asked our students, what is something that you're, uh, and actually, you know what? It is recorded on Facebook, so I can get off Facebook. Cool. All right. It, I said, what is one thing that is bothering you or that you're struggling with as a student? And um, what they're, we've got a bunch of different answers from different classes. But one of them is remembering what you've read, what you've learned as you've moved on to another chapter or two, right? And, and I think we can all struggle with this. We can all relate to this, that uh, when you re read something, you learn something, or you just get out of school and you go take your registry. And I mean, dude, I've been doing this over 20 something years. And, you know, Asher could come up one of our students who loves to ask questions. Asher could come up and ask uh, a question. And I, I don't know. I have to look it up. So you're going to get a lot of uh, Scooby Doo. I don't know. But I'll look it up uh, because we forget things, right? We forget things. But how to study, how to learn. Uh, I don't know if Jason Hale said this himself, I just heard it from him. I know Tom teaches the same way. It's the the general idea of read one, write one, teach one. So I'm gonna write that out here. Read one, write one, teach one. So as weird caps and stuff because I, I goofed it there. Uh, now you're old, Thomas. You're old. Uh, <laughs> and so. As as you study, right? We say this to all the students, even people like myself who think oh, I can just watch the lecture and then I can pass, you know, I can learn what I need to learn and pass the test and know what I need to know. Well, that's not the case. Lecture is only about 50% of what's going on. Now, I did really well in school uh, for the most part, going to lectures and writing down my notes and learning off the PowerPoints. But there are definitely study sessions I had to do where I had to go and look up parts in the chapter. So if you're a person who, who just can, you learn by lecturing, well, then you go test yourself. You get every chapter in every textbook has questions, either at the beginning or the end that quiz you on the stuff that was in that chapter. If you can answer those quizzes, if you're passing your exams, okay, yeah, knock yourself out. But for the most part, like what I found in AEMT class going through that was that I had to watch the lecture and then I did actually have to do some, some, Re, re, <laughs> you know, Tom, mm, mm, Tom's funny, man, today. <laughs> but I had to make my notes and I had to read the book. Now, here's the thing that read one, right? So you read it and that is even part of lecturing. We read the screens we're we're soaking in. So you listen to one as well, because that's a whole different way your brain's processing. So the read part, right? That's the obvious one. Write one. And that's making your notes uh tom posted out like, probably a year or two now ago everything in my mind is like yesterday so i, I don't know when tom put it i'm like my, when my kids were little everything was yesterday even if it was three years ago and that's kind of how my brain works so yeah um <laughs> if you write it the, the article was i don't know why i laughed so hard at that but the article was basically science has shown muscle memory, just the act of writing notes, filling out answers physically with a pen and paper or pencil and paper. That's putting a muscle memory that puts it in a different part of your brain. So even if you don't go back and re look at your notes and I am notorious for that, like Tom's cardio cardiology chapter, I went through and made pages and pages there, like three or four pages of notes yellow legal binding I actually split a line down the middle because i write shorthand and i had two sides to each page flipped over and i'd go through and i'd use a little bit to study i'd reference it to study. it becomes so much at some point that it's too hard to to reference it all to go back and restudy it so you need to make notes that you can study it, to go back but writing it alone helps put it into your brain in a different way and along those lines so you read it you wrote it we have homework and homework helps out, uh, worksheets, workbooks, those kind of things. Uh, now one we have is for an older book. We've recently gone to the Brady EMT book and uh, we're working on the Brady advanced book currently getting that all shored up and ready to go. But we, we, we went to, um, 
or we were using Joseph Bartlett rather. And we have some workbooks and I have found doing those. I remember in school during worksheets, always how many crossword puzzles match the terms, go and look stuff up in the book. And, and, uh, I, I referenced him a lot cause Asher has met, definitely made an impression on me as a student. And he, he asks a lot of questions. He puts the work in and I saw a big improvement in his grades. So I'm like, here's the, the homework for the chapters go and do it. And he's not getting an extra grade for it. It's not, it's no benefit other than studying. But when he studied it that way, then it worked out perfectly. And he, he improved his grade. I wouldn't say perfectly. I, I did say perfectly, but that's the wrong statement, but he improved his grades. He, he did it. He did better than what he was doing. And so that's part of the right one, right? You read it, you, you, you read, you watch your lectures, which you listen to it, you read your book, I like the online book if you have access to it for the Brady because there's a lot of pop outs and a lot of uh, terms like I kind of remember that. Oh, yeah, I don't remember that and click on it. And there's little videos. There's illustrations. There's all kind of cool things there. And uh, so online books are good, too. Then you write one by making your notes. What are the most important? chat? All right, Kevin, I'll get to that here. I'll get to that. And uh, so I'm going to change this up. So you've got the link. Well, I'll, leave, I'll leave the link to the Zoom. Honestly, you can use that on your phone too. You can use the app. I think they do a browser version. You can use the link. And your camera will just pop up right next to mine. I'll hear you. Everybody will hear you. you if you want to be on live, anybody, you can just pop in and ask your question. And uh, it'll put you in a waiting room, but I'll bring you in and all that jazz. So, yeah, Kevin, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Because um, I think it might surprise you with the answer. But yeah, you read it, you listen to it, you write it, and you do. I, I really do think doing the homework, the the not just writing the notes as you read and study, but doing the crossword puzzles, the word searches, um, uh, uh, answering fill in the blank questions, those kind of things that come in the homeworks. Those are really really good to do, and then you teach one, and that's make a presentation. And honestly, what worked for me in class. Uh, we don't really do presentations, right, in EMT school. That's just, uh, maybe some schools do. I know we haven't at Georgia Institute of EMS, and I never did going through. But what we did is we had study groups, and that's what WhatsApp is good for. And and once, you know, the shelter-in-place stuff goes away, then you can do in-person study groups. Finding a friend. I, I honestly, <laughs> imagine this. I didn't get along with very many people in my EMT class. I just didn't care. I was there to do the school and to get my numbers and to move on with my life. And so I didn't really, none of us, and all of us were busy. We were all adults. We all, uh, some people had families. I didn't have a family then, but some people had you know kids to take care of or whatever. Hey, Frank. Yeah, it was good. Um, and so I found a friend, just somebody who wasn't interested in the field at all. Cute girl. Yeah, I did. I found, I found a cute girl. We'd go out for coffee. And knowing that she's going to help me study and she would go, she would open up the book and she would read the question and then she'd have to, you know, either it had to answer there or she'd look it up. I forget which, but I had to answer the questions for, her, and that helped a lot is, is having somebody, um, well, it didn't hurt. They look cute. That's for sure. But having somebody, anybody quiz you on these things because you're teaching them right? You're teaching them the material and explaining it to them so they understand it. Now, if you do a study group, each of you kind of inherently know certain things, right? Um, you know, Kevin, I know was in the class with Asher and Ashley. And when I would teach that class, they would bounce off each other. Kevin and Asher, especially, they kind of challenged each other. How'd you do on this test? How'd you do on this quiz? And, um, it is rare, but if they had a different answer, they'd argue with each other. And, and that's the kind of thing that helps you learn it is that, that teach one there. Uh, Tom says homework does help a lot. Make your own PowerPoint. That is something you can do. Make your own PowerPoint and you can, you can definitely teach, you know, in that way you can teach some things The I personally like human interactivity. Um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people, there was a student actually, I think her last name was Burton. She got super high grades and her notes were, I mean, you could, you could sell a study guide off of her notes. It was crazy good. So that, there's all different ways and always find that person in that class is like that, that makes the good notes and work with them. But I'm telling you, writing it yourself, even if it's just copying their notes, writing it puts it in a different place in your brain. So 
Kevin asks, what are the most important chapters or topics to study for the ER NREMT basic cognitive exam? All of them, dude. It, it's it's honestly, uh, here's, here's, I told you my answer might, my answer might surprise you. Here's my real answer. You don't, you don't study the chapters for that test. That won't help you at all. Hey, Steve. I don't, I, I personally don't believe once you've passed a test. Now, keep a caveat is different things work for different people, right? Reading the book and taking our quizzes and, and, and those exams that you took will help you. But remember all those tests, Kevin, that you took na uh, November class, we started using that platinum EMS education program. And and you guys, it was tough, wasn't it? I mean, it was, it was hard on those questions. And I told you as we went through that there's a reason for this because these are national registry level questions. I wanted you to see the world in a different way. You remember the question, Kevin? You remember the question where it was, if you're on a scene and it's super noisy and you cannot hear a blood pressure, where can you check a pulse to know you have a good pleasure, blood pressure? And it didn't say foot which would make you think, of course, that's the furthest away from the core. It said like dorsalis pedis, which is the, the Latin place. So that's a term you have to know, right? You have to know that dorsalis pedis is where your, your, your foot, right? It's where you're going to check that pulse on the foot. And that kind of thing is what tells me, this, you know, what I study for the National Registry Cognitive Exam. So in the platinum testing that you have, there's the adaptive testing button and you're far enough in you can look at that now and start using that and as practice and um i think i might be able to pull let me go ahead and pull it up and log in i think i might actually be able to share that on the screen just a little bit here uh, i know we're not going to share questions and all that jazz platinum might be like what are you doing you're cheating um and i don't like when they use a weird voice like that on me so i was like whatever man uh <laughs> let's see november emt and pull that up okay let's see if i can share my screen and have it go right to facebook here and share now this is going to look weird for a second because i'm going to flop flip back over to facebook to see if it's grabbing my screen uh or if it's just grabbing actually let me pull up on another screen because i'm not sure i can't because of the way my my stuff set up right now i wasn't anticipating trying to show you something on zoom so let me is it does it or is it just black screen no it looks like it's just black screen and it paused okay it's not going to do it uh how do i stop stop sharing okay stop sharing and the video should catch up here in a second but yeah yeah okay so i stopped sharing so it's not i'm not gonna be able to show you that on the screen it did zoom did something weird I didn't know. I've never tried that before. And I can, I can, I can, I'm sure I can show something else here. Let me do this. Actually, actually, let's do Chrome. Do that. If I can, I can walk you through this real quick. That would be pretty awesome. Do, 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 do. That's it right there. Okay. Bees. Uh, Actually, that should be on another scene, shouldn't it? So let me, haha, I, I got the right idea. I did it the wrong way. You know, I'll just walk you through it. I know, I'm just dragging this thing out. Uh, here's the thing. Go to your emstesting.com, log into your class. And right now I'm actually going to look at the November EMT class because that's where Kevin, oh, that's his class here. So do do EMT, 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 where's the November class? Oh, it's completed. Is it? No, it's not completed, is it? No, this is April. Where's my November class? Don't you hate when you try to go find something, especially when people are staring at you, you can't find it? Ah, I'll see this. Okay, so when, Kevin, when you pull up your class, EMS testing, and you're at the very top, you'll have that little red triangle, remember, where you do your grade book? That button says adaptive testing. And it'll always say there's no test associated with this class. Hit new adaptive test and leave everything in those drop down boxes the same and hit start test. 
And I'll ask you to agree that you're not copying anything if they catch you cheating, blah, blah, blah. But what that does is that is starting you a brand new test to practice. That is a National Registry Adaptive Level Test. So as you go through and you get one wrong, it'll throw you a little bit easier question. If you get one right, it'll throw you a little bit harder question. That's oversimplification, but that's a gist of what happens when you do adaptive testing. And for me, that is the best way to get ready for the cognitive. Because as you go through, it'll show you the areas you're, you're struggling in and, and make mental note of the questions that you don't know. Now, it will not let you, in that adaptive testing, it will not let you review it. So check with uh, Vanessa and, and I'm not sure who else um, might be able to make tests for you. Uh, and I can do, you can email me. I can make you a test as well. But we can make you National Registry practice tests. As a student of our school, if you've already purchased the platinum testing, we can make you a practice test for the National Registry on your level. And that will let you review those questions. But that's, reviewing questions how, is helpful. But that's not as helpful as just doing that test over and over again. And if it comes up, you're short on airway. Well, then you go and review airway and maybe do the airway homework, right? Uh, maybe ask for an extra quiz on airway, something like that. And then you come back and do it again. You watch your videos, those kind of things. But that's how you do it. Because if you're, if you're trying to pinpoint the most important topic or chapter, that's not how registry works. Registry takes everything you've learned and smashes it together, right? It uh, says your instructor must enable this. Uh, Timothy, I'm not sure which class you're in. It might not have been fired up for you yet. Depends on if you're just starting your class, uh, that might not be set up yet for your class. Uh, because it is, we try to do it later in your class because, um, well, it's National Registry. And if you're a chapter or two in, in March, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're only three, four, five chapters in, Tim. Tim, can I call you Tim? Tim, Timmy, Timmy, uh, <laughs> Timothy. Uh, you, if you were to try to do the adaptive testing now, you, it would just punch you in the face because it's it's over the entirety of everything you learned. And here's the thing with registry: I've had a bunch of people come back for different things. Some people say it's all scenarios. All scenarios, and then a different person goes, it's all memorizing terms. It's, it, and the thing is, it's not all anything. National Registry will throw different ways of asking you questions at different topics because they're covering cardiac, medical, trauma, operations. Um, there's one or two more. OB, GYN, uh, pediatrics. I think one more after that. Hey, Teresa. And so... Basically, uh, and, and for everybody who's coming in, and I'm, I'm putting this out on WhatsApp, I am going to download this video, maybe edit some of the frustration I had in the beginning out where it's just answering the questions, and then I'll put it up on YouTube and we'll put the link out on WhatsApp. So if you miss something, it's fine. I'm going to do it again. And it's really weird that I'm seeing three of me across all my screens right now, the way I have things broadcast. I keep I'm seeing delayed hand motions every time I move. So I'm distracted. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Narrowing the areas down that you need to study and helps out, but practicing taking that test and seeing those areas and then taking the practice exams we make on the national registry level. And here's the thing, Tim, since you said you're in March, that what's going to happen is as you're taking that platinum test, we try to make those national level, national registry level tests. You're going to get more and more questions as you go on. Uh, modular exams. We talked about this yesterday in the meeting. You're going to have a, uh, midterms, right? And that might be the adaptive. We're not entirely sure exactly what we're going to do there, but we talked about doing a big adaptive. And you're only halfway through, so that adaptive should be a really tough test because you haven't covered half of the material. But it'll be a nice bullet, uh, uh, um, platform, a baseline. It'll be a nice baseline to show how you learn and, and what you've learned so far and what, what you're working on. Uh, but there will be modular tests. You're going to be taking tests that are... 60, 70, 80 questions test by the end of this class. And that's what we do with our platinum testing is, is use it for that national registry level questions. And that's one of the reasons we make you do it there. So that's, that's how to study. That's the test taking thing. Let me go back to my notes here. Uh, and you know, remembering, and honestly, if you're still having problems remembering once you moved on, you've got to find a better way. And I know the person who asked that specifically they found that doing the homework and writing out answers 
helps solidify it. But ultimately, there is a principle of use it or lose it. And every chapter that that we teach builds on the next, the chapter before. So once you learn, and um, I'll go into the assessment now, because that's another good medical topic. I'll go into the assessment of, or, or doing patient assessment rather. But as you learn patient assessment, right? Every chapter after that walks you back through the steps. Here's the patient assessment on this problem. Here's this patient assessment on this problem. Here, you know, here's on this one. It gets to the point where when I'm doing the lectures, I also want to go, okay, you know what I'm talking about, A, B, C, L, O, C, and I'll just like that because it's the same thing. By the time you've done it a million times, it becomes just second nature. I'm going to WhatsApp to get the exact question about assessment. I think they wanted me to go down all the steps. Let's see. Was that the March one? No, that's A, E, and T. They want to talk about IVs. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, okay, that was Asher. Where are you? Okay. Refresher on all patient assessment steps would be cool. For a primary, history, secondary, modified secondary, rapid secondary. And I'll do more prep work in the future as we do these topics so I can have websites available. I mean, I changed my hard drive this week and thought everything was good to go and nothing saved, nothing set. I'm having to go. I'm going to actually have to put my old hard drive back in and do some stuff. So my point is I don't have all my broadcast materials fully set up where I can just grab and do, but we'll have PowerPoints, we'll have websites, we'll have all kinds of interactivity to show you everything. It'll be great. So assessment, patient assessment. Well, let's break it down. I'm going to have the sheet in front of me. I'm going to go to nremt.org is where you can go. I'll tell you where to go. Uh, pick your level. And I'm talking to, I'm going to talk on the EMT level this time. Pick the psychomotor exam and then scroll down. And you got patient assessment, trauma, patient assessment, management, medical, right? There's two pages right there. I'm going to pick the medical for this one because they're very similar. So the medical, right? Just processes and sections. And these sections are broken up by big gray bars that have no points next to them. And I'm actually going to pull out my thing so I can see chat, see questions as I look at this. So I'm not blocking my own view here. Okay. So national registry on the very first thing is what we do every time PPE scene safe BSI scene safe personal PPE is personal protective equipment. Uh, yeah. So PPE is personal protective equipment. Uh, BSI is body substance isolation. So whatever term you use, say I'm putting my gloves on, I put my goggles on whatever you do. That's the first thing we always do. So as we're getting out of the truck, we're making sure we're putting our gloves on bare minimum. That's the minimum. The next level up is goggles as well, safety glasses. That, and that should be used on a lot of different calls. And then you've got the HEPA filters, the N95 masks. You've got spit masks, which are just a little blue foldable ones that aren't really a filter. That do okay, right? It does help protect you some, but it's not gonna protect you from the big bad diseases. It's just going to keep you from getting spit on, basically. But you got the N95 respirator mask. You've got the the paper gowns that are somewhat yellowish that can cover you, that will cover your boots. You've got the pants. So you've got all kind of PPE there. But for basic assessment, think BPE, seen safe, always. What is the mechanism of injury or nature of illness? What what? It, first off, what do we get called here for? We got called for a 72-year-old difficulty in breathing. So as I walk in, I'm looking around the house. I see an oxygen machine, which tells me she's on home O2. I hear <laughs> going on or, <laughs> you know, some kind of, so my ears are telling me, my ears are telling me that I'm, I'm hearing, you know, some respiratory distress, right? So I'm getting my nature of illness is going on. Well, I've already been told difficulty in breathing. And as I ask, uh, you know, Hey, I'm Charles. I'm the MT. I'm here to help you. Uh, what, why'd you call 911 today? And let them tell you, you know, I'm having trouble breathing. Well, you want to go, well, no, no, I, I know you had trouble breathing. I can, I can see you're having trouble breathing. And sometimes you might play with that a little bit. But the step of the assessment is get them to tell you what's going on. Okay, that's just it. That's your nature of illness. How many patients do you have? As I looked around, there's only one patient in the room. 
Request additional EMS assistance if necessary. Well, if I think they're going to need extensive breathing treatments or they might crash, I'll call for backup and consider stabilization of the spine. Did you fall? Have you had any kind of injuries? Are you hurting anywhere? Nope. All right. I don't need C-spine. I'm done. That's the first section. So you hit it off. PPE, scene safe. What's going on? So that's mechanism of injury or nature of illness. How many patients do I have? I'll call for backup if I think I need it. Considers and I'll consider C spine stabilization, but I don't need it at this time. Boom. That's your first section. Then your second section is primary survey and resuscitation. Verbalize the general impression of the patient. How's what do I see when I walk in? The patient, the general impression is the patient sitting up in a chair, tripoding, working hard to catch your breath. That's the general impression. So when when you're doing a national registry test, you want to say, what is my general impression? How do I see the patient? Or what do I see when I look at the patient as I'm walking in? And real life, you're literally just going to be looking at the patient and seeing what you see. Then you go, a, a, um, your LOC, right? Avpu. Are they alert? Meaning, did they look at me? Are they verbal? Hey, hey, Ms. Smith. And then they look at me. Are they painful? What's up, Heffa? No, don't. <laughs> yeah, we may want to. And days like today, I want to do that to all my electronics. But that's not how it works. But we're talking about uh, external rub or pinching the earlobe, pinching the, the webbing of the fingers. Just a little little bit of pain, and then they wake up their eyes. Now, as you go down at AVPU, right, alert is what I am now. I'm alert. If something moves, I react to it. I can talk to somebody. Even if I don't look at you, I know you're there. I can talk to you verbal is are kind of out of it or or thousand mile stare or just focus until you say something and they're like huh what okay daydreaming if you will not not in a patient but as a related thought process to to you maybe they're daydreaming painful they're out right they're they might be going or whatever but their eyes are closed they're not looking at anybody typically it's possible they have a thousand mile stare like their eyes are locked and nothing's going on and you do that sternal rub, and then they may come around or they may not. Of course, unresponsive, unresponsive. What is the chief complaint? Life threat. Well, in this difficulty in breathing patient, that's the life threat. A, B, C, airway, breathing, circulation, slash oxygenation, right? Is your airway open and clear? That's what we always have to do every single time when we're reset. So we're doing the primary, right? Airway's open and clear. She's breathing 24 times a minute. Well, okay, so on this line, it says assessment, ensures adequate ventilation and appropriate oxygen therapy. Well, she's breathing too fast, but not so fast that I need to take a bag valve and slow her down because she's still getting okay chest rise and fall. She's just breathing fast. So I got good at the ventilation and that's what you'll say and that's what you do. You look at chest rise and fall. How many times a minute are they talking to you? Then the airways open and clear. Or at least it's patent, right? It might not be clear. They might have phlegm and stuff, but it's it's patent. Air is moving through it, and it's not at risk of collapse. Um, uh, I'll get to that, Kyron. Uh, Kyron, no, Kyron. I'll I'll answer you that question in a second. Absolutely, I'll answer that question for you. Um, so yeah, yeah. A, B, C. No oxygen on them if they're in distress, if they need it, and we do that ninety four percent right you want to get that pulse ox early as you can to, to get that baseline uh, assess the circulation so that skin temp color look for any major bleeding check your pulse so a b c l o c now the order on the sheet says l o c first i'm doing all of this i walk in right i'm walking in going hey i'm charles you call 911 i'm here to help you and as they speak back to me okay they're alert They've got an airway that's patent. I can see that they're, they're moving air in and out, but they're moving it a little too fast. I can see that she's in distress. We'll put a little oxygen on her as I check the pulse ox, right? I'm not going to wait, but I'm, it's not instant. It's not like a video game where I click X and it's done, right? So as I, as I, as I um, assess the patient, right? And we get this, we get it set up. Well, my partner can throw the pulse ox on immediately as we do it, and then we'll do the oxygen as we work together. And then I'm looking at skin color, temperature, um, condition, checking the pulse. And then right then and there, I need to figure out if I'm going to transport this patient. Gone. 
ABC, LOC, where are we going? Are we going now? And in this patient, if, if there's tripoding, I'm an EMT and there's tripoding, I'm going to go ahead and throw them on oxygen. Let's get her on the stretcher. Let's go. We'll deal with the rest in the truck. So I'm going to go back to the question, make sure I'm hitting this in, in the basic order that they wanted. Uh, primary. So then that's, that is, that's primary right there. History taking. History of the present illness. You know, how long has this been going on? OPQRST. Onset, provocation, quality, radiation, severity, time. Onset, when did this happen? Well, I've struggled with bronchitis for years. Okay, how long have you been breathing like this? Well, since this morning. Quality, well, we're, we're kind of getting the quality. Is this harder than, have you had an attack like this before? Nah, it's a little history there. Have you had an attack like this before? Um, yeah, I have. Is this worse or better or the same? Same. Okay. So that's your quality, more or less. Severity is how hard are they working? And that's really a pain thing. So severity may or may not play into this part if we're talking about difficulty in breathing. Provocation. Is it easier to breathe sitting forward, does, does getting up and walking? Were you walking when this happened? And no, you know, that's part of the onset thing going on. Uh, what, what were you doing when this started? That's part of their past medical history, I know, which is uh, um, ample, right? A, uh, allergies, medications, past pertinent history, last one on take. But they kind of flow in and out of each other. So really difficulty in breathing, you're like onset, quality, and time. Then we're going to go, are you allergic to anything? Are you taking any medications? I'm sure they're taking medications and you're usually allergic to something. Sulfa is a big one. That a lot of you are allergic to that. And uh, um, penicillin. Uh, past pertinent history, the last one on take, and events leading to the present illness. What was going on? Then your secondary is where we're going to focus on. Okay, we've done a quick head to toe, right? Now we did. Now this is medical. I'm telling you, I'm going to do an eyeball exam from head to toe. Do I see anything out of order? Do I see bleeding? Do I see swollen ankles on this patient? Really swollen legs on this patient. Fat feet. And people don't have fat feet. That's, that's yeah, I'm not talking about, you need to lose some weight in your feet, man. Yeah, I'm talking about the swelling, the, the water retention, right? Because that's a part of CHF. That's a part of heart conditions that can lead to respiratory distress. So if I'm seeing really swollen feet, that tells me, I've got fluid buildup. Something's not pumping right. Something's not flowing right somewhere, okay? So I quick head to toe to make sure I don't see any outstanding injuries, anything crazy going on. So my secondary is I'm going to focus on the breathing. Lung sounds, right? We're doing pulmonary here. So I'm going to do all my mid-axillaries. I'm going to do the four on the back, the four to six on the front, depending on how you break down the, the lungs and listen to it. You know, upper, middle, lower axillary you can do one or two and then on the back you can do the, the four and just give you a good audio picture of what's going on but i'm gonna listen to the lungs and i'll make sure i know any sounds and then i'm gonna know what to take care of that's it that's your secondary vital signs are in your secondary now we're gonna get the blood pressure the pulse in reality you and your partner are doing this together so even on the test if you say okay uh, my primary, I'm going to ABC, LOC, you know, yeah, ABC, LOC, and we're going to go ahead and load and go this patient. Well, while I do my, while I'm lo while we've loaded and go, go, while we're in the back of the truck and I'm getting my history, I'm going to get my partner to get my vital signs. Okay, cool. And so, yeah, I mean, because in real life, you're going to get vital signs. And then after you do your history, okay, what were the vital signs my partner found you got your blood pressure your pulse your respiratory rate and quality which you actually get your respiratory rate and quality up and airway because that's part of breathing that's part of abc make sure they're breathing and then you're going to talk about your field impression my field impression depending on the sounds that i got back let's go let's say chf right well you've got an absent breath sounds in the lower lobes and wet breath sounds in the upper lobes maybe some um yeah you really don't have crackles yeah, some wet sounds. I'm just going to leave it at wet sounds. And uh, <laughs> Nicole Spencer pops out on a scale of 1 to 10. Can you rate your pain? 1 being no pain and 10 being mauled by a bear. And my favorite one is is when somebody's had three or four babies and they've, like, hurt their foot, not even broken it. Oh, it's an 11. I'm like, what was it when you had a kid? Like an 8? I'm like, no. No, we're good. You're not. You're so... Anyway. <laughs> um, 
what is your field impression of this patient? And that's when you say, I think this patient's in CHF. Uh, we're absolutely going to uh, rendezvous with ALS so that they can do more advanced treatments. I'm going to try to CPAP machine and put that on or positive pressure ventilation to keep the, the, the fluid down in the lungs. And we're just going to get to the hospital as fast as we can. And reassessment. So I'm going back to it. Okay. Primary history, secondary, modified secondary. There's no modified. Well, uh, you're okay. I think you're mixing some terms. It's not, not really modified secondary and rapid secondary. There's going to be a modified primary and rapid primary, in my opinion. But I might be mixing up the terms. Uh, and I'll get to those modified here in a second. So that makes sense, right? And then you reassess the patient. You keep making seeing if your interventions have improved or worse, made the patient worse, or if the condition, you know, what is going on with the condition of the patient change at all. And then, of course, give that report to the ER going through. The only difference in trauma is you're going to do a literal head to toe once you get to that secondary. Your primary assessment is going to be ABC, LOC every single time. Life threats. Are they breathing? Do they have an airway? Are they breathing? What's the circulation like? Do they have enough oxygen? And are they bleeding anywhere? Or is it a choking hazard or any life threats, right? Anything that's an immediate threat to life that's fixed right now. Transport the patient and then we're going to do the rest of this stuff. So I hope that helps. Now that rapid, rapid and modified are basically the same thing. So you've got a knife wound sticking out of a leg that may or may not be an immediate life threat, depending on where in the leg it's sticking out. But it is something that needs to be controlled before we move the patient right away. So as I walk up on this patient, we ABC, LOC, every single time without fail, airway, breathing, circulation, level of consciousness. Oxygenation is in there with B, in my opinion, B or C. And uh, yeah, every three to five minutes of critical, 15 minutes if not, Brent, absolutely right. And then um, when you do that modified, so we're doing a, a life threat. We're well, going to do a quick head to toe, make sure that nice stick in the leg is not hiding a bullet wound somewhere or a head injury or something else more pressing. That's more of a threat. And then I'm going to bandage it, right? Or uh, let's say in a car accident, this is a good one. Car accident. You're, you've done a quick head to toe, no findings on the face, no findings on the neck. Da, da, da. Well, I've got, uh, you've got a tender abdomen with some bruising. Okay. Noted. And you keep on going through. That's your primary. Your primary is always going to be your primary ABC LOC. I want to pop to the trauma one real quick here. Let me pull the trauma again, nremt.org. Go to the cognitive and scroll down the cognitive test, scroll down. All these papers are here. And this is how we score you on these assessments. So yeah, ABC, LOC is the same thing on trauma. And you get your Glasgow Coma Scale, right? That's slightly different. You get the Glasgow Coma Scale. Uh, you do that on everybody, but it's really important on trauma patients. So as we inspect things, as we do a very quick, oh, I found this note and found this note and found this. When we do our modified or the rapid is not the modified. The rapid is let's find those threats. I got a gunshot wound. I'm controlling that. Okay, anything else real quick? Anything else on chest? No, anything else on the abdomen? No. Um, I've got a knife wound or another gunshot wound in the leg. I'm controlling that. Anything else? It's not the detailed, okay, I'm checking the head. I'm checking the back of the head. Rapid is just fast. And then you might go back in the truck. Once you've got those life threats managed, you go to the back of the truck, and then you, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and make sure I really didn't miss anything on the head. Let's really check those eyes. Pearl. See, I haven't mentioned Pearl in most of this, but your pupils equal round reactive delight, man. That's that's what you want. So that's that modified or rapid exams is just hitting it as fast as you can, focusing on the major complaints right now. I'm in a car or, you know, I'm working a car wreck, right? I go up to the patient. Are you hurting anywhere? Just just my stomach hurts. Nothing else. No. Okay, for right now, ABC LOC is intact. I'm going to go ahead and do C-collar. Per your local protocols, I'm old school, so the protocols may be different, but I'm going to do C collar, maybe a KED, get them done, pull them out, get them straight. You know, we're extricating. That's the first thing. We make sure we kept ABC, LOC, and, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I got you uh, there. Sorry, ABC, LOC. And so, anyway, 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 anyway. <laughs> 
you're going to check for it. You're going to focus on it. You're just fast, fast, fast. Okay, let's get them out. And I've got them on the backboard. And then as we get to the truck, the first thing I'm going to focus on is that abdomen. That's where they said they were hurting. And I'm checking my abdomen and finding what's going on there, any kind of rigidity, tenderness, rebound tenderness, uh, which is not an entirely trustworthy uh, uh, sign and symptom anymore, but it's something you need to know at least. But you know what's going on with the abdomen? But ultimately, and that's my rapid, right? Okay, I quickly scanned them. I don't see any major bleeding. That's the rapid part. I don't see any major bleeding, broken bones, or or bruising, other than where they said, okay, you know, I have this going on. Because if the abdomen is dark purple and swollen, I'm not putting on the KED. Let's strap on the thing. Let's get them in the back of the truck. I mean, let's do the quick supported turn, keeping that C spine managed. Get them in the board. Let's go. Let's get them in the back of the truck as fast as possible. But ultimately, even when you do the rapid or the modifieds, which is where you just go right for the problem, you zone right in and take care of what looks to be the emergency. You need to go back and do a head to toe exam and trauma physically and uh, a mental head to toe exam on what could be going on medically if you can. All right. So hopefully that helps. You break down the steps of assessment and what's going on there. Uh, and this question from Kyron in the, the live chat room here in Facebook. Uh, can I ask a question? If you're getting phone calls from different agencies trying to give you a temporary license, do you think people should take it? Uh, Kyron, you still with me? I just want to make sure um, that you're here. Uh, and yeah, Teresa, going back to the assessment, check what you can on scene and go go three to the hospital. Absolutely. Uh, so Kyron, to answer that question about the temporary licenses, I don't know. You need to call the state office uh, as long as you still live in the cab, which I think is where you lived before. That's region three. That's going to be EJ daily. You need to contact the state office. You might even need to contact the national registry office because I know that there was some provisions to get your temporary license It's a provisional license. I, because I have my license, I haven't researched in how to do that or what the legalities are. So I don't know. I would, I would, at normal times I'd be like, absolutely not. That's not a thing but right now with COVID-19. If there is a thing where you can get a temporary license. 100% would not trust the companies. I would call the state and go to, uh, you know what, I'll look it up right now. Cause I know I'm on nremt.com right now. Let me get to the homepage and I'm gonna go to their, um, where's your COVID-19? There it is, COVID-19. Click on that. Learn more, is that what I need? Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and put this in our chat right here on Facebook. So there's the link. Um, provisional cert certification at early stages. The current designs of the psychomotor were not consistent with public health recommendations. So as a result, National Registry released provisional certifications to communicate to states that a candidate had met all requirements except the psychomotor. As my practice is limited, the state EMS office regulates that. Is our provisional certification national registry? Yes, but it's not the same as being fully national registered. Uh, so it'll actually last till December of 2021 for provisional. Uh, if your course was completed after 3 1 2018, and your cognitive examination was completed by January after January 1st, 2019, you, you qualify. So it sounds like you have to have psychomotor. Uh, the psychomotor is the only thing it sounds like they're pushing off. You have to have a uh, passive cognitive and Brent says state will acknowledge the provisional. Um, what I'm reading here. is that it looks like the provisional is only for psychomotor. You have to have cognitive to get the provisional. So on that note, what I'll go back to is call 
National Registry first because they will have their level of, of questions first. I guarantee you, EJ is going to ask you whatever the stuff. And if it's, if it's cognitive, she'll say, have you passed your cognitive? And if you say no, she'll probably say, we don't handle that. What she wants, actually what she's going to say is, have you, have you gotten the provisional license from registry is what she's going to ask you. So call national registry first and find out exactly what the provisional certification means. I'm just kind of scanning through. I'm just scanning through it. Um, but yeah, because everything references once a psychomotor exam is completed, psychomotor exams don't match with the current social uh, recommendations. You know, it's all about psychomotor. So yeah, it's, it's, I know you passed your psychomotor, Chiron, so you may have to do the, you may have to do written. Yeah, Brent says you, you test written first pass and you get your state license numbers. But if you pass your written, you're going to be fully licensed because you are certified rather because you have taken that, that, that skills test. All right. I got a uh, little bit more time. So let me go back to the topics. Actually, you know what? At this point, yeah, we're going to call it here because those are two big topics. But I still have on my list from the students already, I still have the topics of what it's like working EMS. You know, why does the, the pay rate seem, why are the pay rates in EMS seemingly low? I have a long talk about that. Pathophysiology, IVs, and medical math. And here's the thing about medical math. For all of our current students, Tom went into, or for the advanced students, because you don't really need it for EMT class. It's not a bad thing to have. Uh, but he did this for the advanced students as part of their package is if you, and if you just want to learn it, you go to myemsconed.com and you can sign up for an account. If you are in the current, uh, uh, advanced classes, the, e the email that you used for Moodle will, uh, be able to use a coupon code and that code has been put into your classes in WhatsApp. So you can check that out. For everybody else, you can just go register. Uh, you can buy the class itself. And I'm pulling up how much that med math is right now. It might just be included. Yeah, it looks like it's just included under the, the, the program now, which is just sign up for the con ed. Uh, oh, David Cross, where can I go to school for EMS? Well, you can go to Georgia Institute of EMS. We have an online program. We're gonna be doing more live videos like this as well, just for the public, for everybody to, to access and use. I gotta say, even though my, my stuff's still a work in progress, it looks really good on the broadcast. I, I'm digging the sharpness of everything, but okay. So David, and thank you for Teresa for pointing that out. Uh, I didn't miss that question. So David, if you uh, want to come to our class, go to Georgia EMT.com and look at all the options that are there and you can uh, see what, what fits for you. Um, I want to unpin. There we go. I need to unpin this. So there's a flow. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, we have online hybrid classes. We have flex classes. We have all kinds of classes that will help you out. And now that things are changing up a little bit more, less restrictions are, are there. More restrictions are being lifted every day. We are able to do the hands-on and we've got two or three sites out of like our 10 that are allowing for actual ride-alongs. But by the time you complete, you get to that point in your class, Everything should have our right along areas open. Clinical, clinical rotations is the word I'm looking for, clinical sites. So yeah, georgiaemt.com is where you can go. And I'm gonna go look at it right now just to make sure everything's good on the website. So yeah, you can click on, on the EMT link and it'll give you all the information you need. Uh, but for the Con Ed, actually, Con Ed is still open. For everybody, the state kicked back the date till June 21st, as long as you applied for extension by May, March 30th. So I hope you did that if you're still waiting on it. National Registry did the same thing. And National Registry took away the live aspect of the training. So you no longer have to be live. So you can go for 150 bucks, any level. You can go sign up at the Con Ed, uh, myemsconed.com and get recertification and get all your time in. We were going to shut it down on April 1st, 
but since the state and national registry extended it out to June 31st, June 21st, June, end of June, somewhere in June, once they extended it out, uh, we extended it out. So you've got till June to have full access to everything you need to get your time done this year. Uh, you can, you can go ahead and access everything you need for the state and it'll be good for two years. National registry, however, will make you do the live hours after June 21st. If you're recertifying with them at a later date, so that won't count. All right. Uh, with that all being said, it's been a good, been about a good hour here. So topics, email me Charles at G A I E M S dot com for any topics that you want to discuss for topic Tuesday. EMS underground is a little bit different. I'm going to bring those back in the mornings when I'm drinking my coffee and we'll just hang out and chill and talk about life and whatever's going on. And, and actually I want, I am trying to find a way and I thought zoom would work for it, but zoom only gives me about 40 minutes, but I want to find a way to where as you want, and you're in the field and it's EMS underground, you just want to call in and say, Hey, this is what's going on today. Or, Hey, here's something that happened. Or, Hey, did you know about this? You know, whatever you want to chat like a radio talk show. You want to just chat. I'm trying to work on a way to have that open for EMS underground. So that is something that we're working on actively so that you can not only feel like you're represented, but you can actually be represented. Cause I'll be honest, I haven't done it because I'm not on the front lines. And for the longest time, I felt like it might even be offensive for me to talk about what's going on in the field when I'm not in the field, I'm not dealing with it. Like you are. Then Tom made a really good point is, you know, maybe I just need to get on there and entertain you for a minute, make you laugh for a minute, let you vent vent for you just make you feel heard because i know a lot of emts out there right now aren't feeling like their voice is being heard at all this so we're going to give you that so topic tuesdays are the topics that i'm doing here so email those or if you just want to chat about anything else uh, that's my email charles at gaiems.com you can email me and i'll figure out which show which you know broadcast it works in but these topic tuesdays we're going to cut down we're going to put on our youtube channel and it'll also go into WhatsApp for all of our students. So thanks for tuning in. And, uh, you know, we'll see you later on this week sometime. <laughs>